Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a 12th grade topic, finding your terms of an arithmetic sequence. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use that to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions, what you see today, or even your own homework, you can always find in the comment box below, or visit my Facebook page at Tutumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. At the end of this video, I've been linking my 12th grade playlist in which I cover a lot more topics, so if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned. This video is going to have two parts, so leave a like, smash subscribe, and let's get started. In my previous video, we covered the basics of arithmetic sequences. More specifically, we covered how to find your explicit formula and your recursive formula when you're given an arithmetic sequence. Now, if you hadn't seen that previous video, you can find it right up here. However, in this video, we're going to be using both of those formulas to find some terms in our sequence. And we're going to be starting with our explicit formula here. In this example, we have a sub n equals 11 over 8 plus 1 half n. Now this is our explicit formula and we want to find our a1, a2, a3, and just to throw something out there, our a23. So pretty much find our first three terms and then find our 23rd term. Now if you recall, in order to find our a sub 1 or an nth term, all we have to do is plug in our n wherever we see it. So if we're looking for our a sub 1, our first term, we would plug in our 1 wherever we see an n. So we're going to have 11 over 8 plus 1 half times 1. And we can simplify this to 11 over 8 plus 1 half, which equals 11 over 8 plus 4 over 8, which gives us a final answer of 15 over 8. So a sub 1 is going to be 15 over 8. Now we do the same thing for our a sub 2. Wherever we had our n, or in previous case, our 1, we're now going to put a 2. And when we simplify this, we're going to get the following. And this simplifies to, which gives us a final result of, so our a sub 2 is going to be 19 over 8. Now you should be getting the hang of this. What are we going to do for our a sub 3? Our a sub 3 is going to have a 3 everywhere there was a 2, or an n up here. So a sub 3 is going to look like this. And when we simplify everything, we're going to have 11 over 8 plus 3 over 2. And this is going to be 11 over 8 plus 12 over 8. And you can combine that to be 23 over 8. Our final answer of 23 over 8. So our a sub 3, I'm going to put a little bit of space here, a little bit of space. A sub 3 is going to be 23 over 8. So now we have our a sub 23. What is our a sub 23? Now, why is there a big jump here? We have the jump because we can. Our explicit formula is designed to find any term. We don't have to go in order. Yes, we did go in order here, but we don't have to. And we want to just drive that point home with having an a sub n that is way out there compared to our first three terms. But we're going to do the same exact thing that we just did. So we're going to remove all of our threes and replace them with 23. And when we do that, we have the following. So when we simplify this, we have 11 over 8 plus 23 over 2. And this is going to be 11 over 8 plus 92 over 8. And when you combine those, you get a final answer of 103 over 8. So our a sub 23 is 103 over 8. So you see just how simple it is to use our explicit formula and find our first n terms, our first three terms in this case, and find some arbitrary nth term out there, our 23rd term in this case. Now we're going to move on to using our recursive formula. So in this example, we are trying to use our recursive formula 
to find our a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4. Now, we're not going to find a sub 1 because we're going to be given a sub 1 for this formula. And remember, our recursive formula really depends on knowing the previous value before you can move on. So we need a starting point. In this case, our starting point is going to be a sub 1, and we're going to use that to find our a sub 2. Unlike our explicit, instead of plugging in 1s here necessarily, or you can, you can, you can plug in the term that you're looking for, our a sub 2. Uh, this doesn't really help us much because we have to substitute what this a sub 1 actually equals. And in this case, our a sub 1 we know to be 3 over 5 minus 1 third. And this is going to be what our a sub 2 should be. And of course, you can rewrite this as 9 over 15 minus 5 over 15, which gives you a final result of 4 over 15. So our a sub 2 is going to be 4 over 15. Now, if we we're trying to find a sub 3, we would need to plug in our a sub 3 here. So our 3, which means we plug in the 3 there, means we have to use a sub 2. Once again, it's recursive. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug in what we just found to be our a sub 2, which is 4 over 15 minus 1 third. And when we do that, we're going to simplify this to be 4 over 15 minus 5 over 15, which simplifies to a final result of negative 1 over 15. So this is going to be our a sub 3, negative 1 over 15. And of course, we're going to do the same exact thing to find our a sub 4. We're going to plug in what we just found. So in this case, we have a a sub 4 equals our a sub 3 minus 1 third. And our a sub 4 is going to be our negative 1 over 15 minus 1 over 3. And of course, you can rewrite this as negative 1 over 15 minus Neg well, minus a 5 over 15, and this simplifies to negative 6 over 15. And of course, you can simplify this a bit more. There's a 3 on the top and a 3 on the bottom you can take out, leaving you with a negative 2 over 5. So our a sub 4 is going to be negative 2 over 5. Five. Now notice we don't have some arbitrary term out there like we did for our explicit. This is on purpose because a recursive really depends on knowing what you previously found. So if you want to do like an a sub 23 again, we would need to find our a sub 22. And that would need to find an a sub 21 and then keep going back. So we're going to have to pretty much build out the entire sequence to get to this arbitrary value here. But if we want to find a few couple terms like we just did, this is more than enough. So I hope you were able to follow along with today's video. And I hope you know how to find all of your terms for your arithmetic sequences now. However, if you have any questions about what we saw today or even on homework, you can always put it in the comment box below or visit my Facebook page at Tunami Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to do that like. It surely helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found the video helpful. And if you found the video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. But that's all the time I have for today. I'm really helping help with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney. Here's your playlist. And this has been another session of Do Your Me Simple.